What happened to the weird outcast at your school, who everyone made fun of? He died in a fire. It was sad. I wasn't friends with him, because our schedules didn't sync up. But my best friend had some classes with him, and they were buddies. The outcast didn't do anything weird, he just had really long hair, thick glasses, read Harry Potter all the time, and was super poor. His parents had some family staying in the backyard in a camper. They had daisy chained a bunch of power strips and extension cords. It caused a fire in the house. The mother, father, and older brother got out. When the outcast didn't come out his older brother went in after him. They both died. The found the older brother collapsed at his side. It's interesting. When he died it became trendy at school to pretend he was your friend before he died. Everyone talked about how they missed him and how he was such a good friend. Even the people who would mercilessly tease him. Most of these kids went to the grief counselor too. Everyone deals with grief differently and maybe they felt guilty they treated him like garbage. But they still continued to ceaselessly make fun of my friend who was his buddy, so I don't think they really actually have a shit. He became a vegetarian bodybuilder and then joined the military. He's a real nice guy who somehow managed to avoid accumulating pent up anger after years of being made fun of. People treat him with a lot of respect now. A kid I knew in middle school was weird. Really into bats, wolves, etc. He seemed nice, and we all egged him on do the wolf man. Then he would growl, and snarl and make weird faces. He also barely talked, and when he did it was murmurs. He was sorta the weird kid but nobody was ever mean to him, or made fun of him. We sorta just accepted and embraced it as a class. A few years later, after going to different high schools I heard he got expelled for biting a kid. I can only imagine how that went down. For starters, threatened to kill all 5 black people in my school, then said he would come back and kill all who picked on him. Thankfully me and a few friends tried to be friends with him, we knew he was a loner. He ended up in jail for raping an 8 year old. He doused himself in gasoline and let himself on fire when the popular girl he asked to prom declined. He survived, barely. It's been about 15 years and he now is unemployed and lives with an emotionally abusive woman twice his size who cheats on him constantly. His life hasn't gone so well. I made friends with her in school because I knew it sucked to be alone and different. I was exposed to mentally handicapped people since my mom worked at a care facility and cared for them. 12 years after we kind of stopped talking and led our own lives. She tells me she got married and thinks without the friendship we had, she wouldn't have the confidence to do a lot of things she's done and doing now. I don't talk to her anymore, but she's happily married, holding a steady job, and had a kid last time we talked. The kid got expelled and went to prison on 6 counts of arson 2 weeks before graduation. He lit 6 portable toilets on fire and is still in to this day. I started working customer service thinking it had helped me build up my social skills. Fast forward 10 years, I still work in the service industry, have great social skills, but also hate everybody, am broke, and want to die. I've spent the last 8 years in therapy, I'm still living at home, I don't really leave my house except for the occasional late night movie, I'm too much of a nervous wreck to hold down much of a job and now pretty much all of my contact with the outside world is done through Facebook and Reddit. Despite being 30 plus years old she has somehow managed to Facebook friend almost every single person we went to school with going back to kindergarten. Kinda odd, not only that she would add them all, but that they would accept her friend request. In middle school the school nerd was this kid, let's call him Jane Luck. It was a rough school predominantly Latino and black and here is this gangly, awkward, white boy with glasses and an enlarged esophagus, so he was always foaming around his mouth and smelled like dirty clothes. His teeth were always grubby and his hair was always overgrown. He routinely just acted weird and didn't have any friends. Fast forward post high school graduation. He and I had gone to separate high schools, but he lived in the same neighborhood as some of my friends, so I would occasionally run into him. He had taken to wigger style, which was really cringy. This overweight, awkward, white boy, same glasses, same foamy mouth, same terrible lisp, and poor social skills, living with his parents. By this time it was apparent that he was slow, so to speak. 
I have a cousin who is also slow and made the mistake of inviting Jane Luck to a party where he got caught masturbating in a back bedroom and then lashed out at everyone when they made fun of him, eventually turning a knife on someone and the police were called. Fast forward to about 2 months ago I was hit up on Facebook by some guy with a Latino name who said he was Jane Luck and wanted to reconnect with me. I checked the photos and, yup, it was him. I guess he changed his name to something more Latin sounding because he thought that might make him cooler? Who knows, but he's not at all Latino. Anyways, I asked him what he was doing in life and he said he's in prison but he can still talk on the phone and asked for my phone number. I declined but asked why he's in prison. He didn't answer, but in his FB pictures there's a series of pictures where he clearly had had the shit beat out of him, so my guess is that he got in a fight that ended badly for someone, and he's going away for a while now. Answering for my brother. He was a short tiny kid in high school with acne problems, and not the best hygiene skills. I knew he didn't have many friends. But it wasn't until I met a girl who was a freshman when he was a senior that I learned he was the outcast and he was made fun of constantly and didn't really have friends. In my eyes my brother was this awesome, funny great guy so this really blew my mind. He wound up joining the army at 18, grew to be about 6 feet 4. He advanced quite fast in the army and really did well for himself. He's out now, serving in the National Guard still, moved across the country, is working on obtaining a degree, and is well traveled with plans to open his own business. He's the most outgoing person I know who can make friends like nothing, and loves making people laugh. I knew he had it in him all this time and it's sad that the kids in high school couldn't see that. I was the kid who was bullied a lot in school, while also being abused at home tried to kill myself a couple times, didn't work obviously. Now I'm almost 18, stressed out of my mind working a fast food job, going to school, and doing theater. I'm losing my hair and a lot of weight from the stress and exhaustion, but I still have a whole life ahead of me. Got a boyfriend who treats me well, and I'm looking into a career in musical theater. So, all in all, I'm healing. And I'll get there, someday. The kid was a refugee, and came to a new country and new school, and instead of welcoming him, and helping him adjust, the small class just made fun of him. Now he is a deadbeat. I'm not sure, if it was all the trauma of fleeing a country or the trauma of being a social pariah for years on end. And sure, kids get picked on, but he left school without any friends. I don't recall him being invited to any parties, even the big ones. Can you imagine? Day in and day out, no one even noticing or caring about you. No one to share your feelings with. No one to tell about your good days or your bad times. It's one of those, if I could turn back time, I definitely have more compassion toward him. I wasn't the weird outcast, but I was never super popular. I got picked on and bullied, because just when I started to fit in, we'd move. Then I had to keep starting over. New school, new people. Kids weren't as accepting of new people as they are nowadays in my experience. Anyway I ended up dropping out and went to Job Corps. Got my good enough diploma and have been though various jobs over the years. Dealt with massive anxiety and depression. Through a series of very fortunate events I now work at my youngest son's elementary school. I have various things I do there, from lunch cashier, to reading tutor to 8 students. I volunteer in several classrooms helping the teachers with whatever they need. I assist in running a food pantry once a week out of the cafeteria and I just started an after school Lego program with a small group of kids that focuses on building relationships with each other and teamwork while utilizing Lego. I'm working on going to school to get some certifications I need to become a preschool assistant next year and then I think I'm going to go for some degrees to someday have my own class. I feel better than I ever have in my life. I'm making a difference in people's lives. That probably saved my life. Reading this thread kind of made me sad that so many stories end badly or well ended at all. I just turned 40 and it took half my life, but I'm finally beginning to live. I read something a while back that really gave me inspiration to keep doing what I'm doing. Be the person that you needed when you were younger. I started doing all of this because I wanted my son to have a better experience than I had. Now I'm doing it because all the kids deserve to have that chance. 
I was the weird kid. There were stranger and more mentally off people than me. But I had no friends because, and was bullied quite a bit. Girls would date me as a joke with their friends, to see who could break up with me in the worst way possible. But I graduated early, saved up money, moved a state over, met my wife, and got married 3 months later. All of this happened within the year I graduated. I'm moving to Europe soon, to be with my wife. I'm going to free college in Europe, married to a very beautiful amazing Euro babe, study law. I'd say that pain and suffering I was put through finally ended and helped me become a better person. Reminds me of Tyrone. None of his classmates liked him, because of his stupidity, especially his teacher, who was always yelling at him, you're driving me insane, Tyrone. One day Tyrone's mom came to school to check on how he was doing. The teacher told his mom honestly, that her son was simply a disaster, getting very low marks, and never had she seen such a dumb boy in her entire teaching career. The mom was shocked at the feedback, and withdrew her son from school, and moved out of Detroit, relocating to Cleveland. 25 years later, the teacher was diagnosed with an incurable cardiac disease. All the doctors strongly advised her to have heart surgery, which only one surgeon could perform at the Cleveland clinic. Left with no other options, the teacher decided to have the operation, which was successful. When she opened her eyes after the surgery she saw a handsome doctor smiling down at her. She wanted to thank him, but could not talk. Her face started to turn blue. She raised her hand, trying to tell him something but eventually died. The doctor was shocked, and was trying to work out what went wrong. When he turned around he saw our friend Tyrone working as a janitor in the clinic, who had unplugged the oxygen equipment, in order to connect his floor buffer. I was that guy. I wore a black trench coat, combat boots, and all black clothing freshman year in high school, 1990, and was teased by both the jocks and the slackers. My first period math teacher would heap insults onto me, and accused me of cheating. I dreaded school, and never wanted to go. Never really had any friends in school, and I was too awkward, to try and make any. I attempted to kill myself a few times, but was a failure at that. Finally got the help I needed and transferred to an independent study school. Now I'm married, have a kid, and have a great life. I don't dwell on the past much, but I do in rare moments wonder what others thought of me. Died in a head-on crash with a semi along with his mom, while driving from Washington to Oregon for a Christian youth group camp. He was always a bit off. Very into WWE, when we were young. Talked with a bit of a lisp. Didn't have great social skills. Many, myself included, bullied him and treated him like shit. He was always nice to everyone despite all the shit he took. In fact I don't know anyone who was nicer than he was at that age. When he died everyone pretended they were buddies and nice to him and everything. I couldn't bring myself to even go to the funeral. I didn't feel like I deserved to pretend like I was important to him or whatever. It felt disrespectful. I try to pay my respect to him by remembering to treat people kindly. There were several kids like that in my year at school. One of them is doing a prince's trust course on engineering, still lives with his father, and has a girlfriend who is obsessed with World of Warcraft. Another one of them works in Primark. As for the other two, I've literally no idea.